So, they, like to start off, you have to look at Fick's law, and it states that the amount of gas that can transfer is proportional to the amount of space it has. So that's why the bronchioles on arterials dilate, because they have to increase the space to diffuse more gas across it. So, now that we know Fick's law, we have to look at arterioles over here. And then we can go on to the bronchioles. Now, the first thing is the arterioles, they react <coughs> to the O2 levels. And the bronchioles react to CO2 levels. So that so they react off of the difference in the gases. So arterioles are strictly based on the oxygen levels, and the bronchioles are based on the carbon dioxide levels. So what happens is on this side we're going to have an arterial, and over here we're going to have the bronchial. There's a little blood. Don't do that. Okay, so when there's an increase in oxygen, what's going to happen is that it has it causes the dilation in the arterioles. When it increases, it causes dilation. In order to get more blood flowing there so it can diffuse across. So by increasing the arterial size, then the bronchioles can receive more of this oxygen and actually pull from it, so it's getting more to be pulled away. So then you can drop the levels and get back to the balance. So when there's low oxygen levels being actually wait, Yeah. That was right. And then when there's a decrease in O2 levels, it constricts. because it's not pulling a lot of oxygen from there, so it constricts because it doesn't need that extra space because there's not a lot for it to pull from. So because there's not a lot, it's going to constrict so blood can go to the other arterioles where it's able to get more oxygen and keep like the proportion the same. And then that's how it like, relates to the bronchioles because oxygen moves from here into the arterioles, and then the CO2 moves out. So what happens is, as the oxygen moves in, like when it dilates and now that it's pulling more oxygen, there's going to be more CO2 leaving. So now the bronchioles react when there's an increase. They're going to dilate as well. And what this does, yeah. When, so once they dilate, it's able to get more airflow so you can get rid of that carbon dioxide buildup. And then once the carb, like so now that these have dilated, like it's kind of like always constantly dilating and constricting in order to maintain the balance. So when there's an increase, these first dilate, they pull more oxygen, and now there's an increase of CO2 inside the bronchioles. So now the bronchioles dilate in order to get more airflow and get rid of the excess CO2. So now that that happens, now the balance, and they can both constrict back to like an appropriate size and kind of back to equilibrium. But then they decrease. Whenever there's low CO2, they actually constrict. Because there's low CO2 levels, so they don't need to be bringing in extra airflow to get rid of the CO2 because it's already in balance. So they constrict again so the airflow can get to the other areas where it needs to. Yes? Is it like constricting like smaller than normal or like yeah. constricting back to its normal? Like vasoconstriction. Like, okay, in the middle you have like the balance, the equilibrium, like where it's fine. Well, when there's an excess of this oxygen in one of them, these, the arterioles dilate in order to get this oxygen. And now that they've pulled the oxygen from here, now there's excess CO2 in the bronchioles. So because there's more CO2 in the bronchioles, now the bronchioles dilate more to get rid of it. Okay. And then they kind of go back to equilibrium. But at the same time, like if there's a blockage such as mucus in the bronchioles, so there's like a mucus blockage. So now there's, um, what's it called? There's low oxygen levels inside the bronchioles when you breathe in. This doesn't need to dilate any because there's low oxygen levels. So it's not going to pull a lot of oxygen if it puts a lot of blood in there. So it's going to constrict so blood can go to other places where there's no blockage and it can get the amount of oxygen it needs. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Was that it? Yeah. Now, okay. How do, what, you say get rid of it when they dilate. How does that take place? What is that process? You say it gets rid of the CO2 when it dilates. Well, um, it dilates because so it can pull more air in. 
So like when you breathe by bronchodilating, not the bronchi, the bronchial is bigger, it's able to get more air out because the airflow is increased. That's how like I read it, at least. Because like by dilating now, you can get more of the air out, and then also when you breathe in, it brings in more oxygen by the because it's bigger. Is it due to the pressures? Like that's why they diffuse across. Like because of the pressure imbalance, that's what happens, and then. Because the oxygen, that's why the oxygen only flows into the arterioles and the CO2 flows because of the pressure differences. Because when you breathe in, the pressure difference of the oxygen between here causes oxygen to flow in and then the CO2 to flow out. So because of that, that causes the, the imbalance of the CO2 and oxygen levels, then that causes the dilation or constriction based on. Ah. <laughs> You guys understand that? Yes. Yeah. Where'd you get that information? I went to there was a thing on Rutgers University that talked about it. And then I read over the notes more. I tried to make a video to explain it, but there's no videos over that. I'm not a YouTube standing ovation. Like that's how I got it because like the fixed law like so by dilating it can increase the diffusion in order to expand that and then these are only oxygen levels and that's only CO2. That's interesting. Any questions? No. Email that to me, would you? Okay. <laughs>